Hey guys, Mark from Periphery here. This entry, we're going to explore some of the riffs in Priestess a little bit. Uh, we went over the pre-chorus riff a couple months ago, and now we're going to go into the intro riff slash main riff. So the inspiration behind writing the, the main riff was to kind of walk the line between playing single notes and outlining an entire chord, arpeggiating a chord. And while I'm playing entire chords, I'm also leading into them playing single notes. And that's a it's a really useful compositional device if you've never used it before. Uh, it's prevalent in a lot of our music, but it really shines in this song in particular. So the first chord in the passage begins with, it's, it's a, actually a direct homage to Dimebag Daryl, because I heard this song on the Great Southern Tranquil called uh, Tens, and the bridge section, he plays his chord. And I know a lot of artists use that chord, but in particular, the way he used it in that progression was really inspiring. Um, so it starts with that chord sort of uh, hammering on into it. And you see there, this is what I'm talking about, sort of walking the line between arpeggiating a chord and writing a single note line. But which, whichever you consider it, it's all for the same purpose. It's leading into the next chord. And that's what I'm trying to achieve here. So again, slower, that's... and then getting ready to land on the second chord. And again, the whole idea of hammering on into the chord to keep that intact, you do the same thing for the second one. So this chord. And I don't actually think of that as one chord. I, I sort of, I sort of think, of it, think of it as a very long arpeggio that kind of just keeps going. And because of the, the, the fingering positions, of each section of it, it's very natural to play. It sounds difficult and it sounds complex, but it really isn't. It's, it's very natural to play if you look at each position one by one, so. Just look at that as one part of it. And that's kind of the trickiest part of it, leaving that, that open note available at the end there, but, but again, sort of break it up and look at it in small pieces. That makes it a lot easier to tackle and less intimidating. So after that. Again, here's another theme that in previous columns has happened is the, the next repetition is shifted forward. In this case, I think it's, an, it's another eighth note, but it's shifted forward just a little bit. So it adds some variation, adds some more of a different feel for the next section. So since it shifts back an eighth note, the one now happens and the phrase begins on the upbeat after that, so it goes one. And again, I think of this as just keeping that chord intact, but then you're just changing the bass notes, basically. So these voicings stay the exact same. Which is a beautiful three note uh, uh, voicing group right there, but just change the bass notes. And then, at that point, you go into a fill that later becomes a theme for the pre-chorus of the song, and the fill goes. And I'll play that slow. So again, making use of open strings and lots of sliding and uh, movement to, to create a sense of fluidity.
So the next part of the tune I'm going to break into is the second verse. It's a part that's associated in a lot of ways because it's, it's in, it involves a lot of uh, arpeggiating of chords and sort of walking that line between chords and, and individual notes I mentioned. And uh, yeah, here it goes. So I should first mention that this song is played originally on a seven string. We tracked it with the seven string exclusively in the studio. I'm just playing it now because I have a six string at my disposal. It doesn't really change most of the context of the riffs in the song. There's one or two notes that may be missing from the original version that just have the seventh string ringing out open or including a bass note, but the gist of it is there. The second verse begins with a, with a sort of a different take on sections of the intro riff, and that first shape goes like this. And you'll see it almost follows the pattern of the original. And it's sort of reappropriated here, so that starts. And again, another example of sliding down to a different part of the neck for a couple reasons, for movement and getting to another chord, which would sound better, uh, goes like this. You slide from the 12th fret to the 5th fret to put you in line to play another chord. And that slide goes like this. And you want to make sure when you're sliding down that you're ready to play the next couple notes in the chord. So that's, that's kind of the hardest part about this whole trick, but with enough training and getting accustomed to where you're sliding, it actually feels very natural when you get used to it. Again, using some close intervals there to add that droniness. And the third repetition, again, starts slightly differently than the first and it begins with this. And that chord is basically just this. It's based off of this chord. You're just arpeggiating it. And you're referencing the very first part of the passage there and the intro of the song, like I said earlier, with that line. And then the passage ends with this. And that chord goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> 